brain, you're in the nuts domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Nerds Domain Podcast. This week, we're listening to a bunch of clips from Indie PopCon 2015. Jesse went around and talked to a lot of the exhibitors and vendors there, and so this is his compilation of all the people he talked to. Hi, I'm here with... Mike Rittenhouse. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? I'm in a band called Five Year Mission, and we write songs about episodes of Star Trek. Like all the episodes, or...? Uh, yeah, we're doing the original series uh, in broadcast order, so we will have 80 songs when we're done. Oh, nice. Do you plan on doing any other Star Treks afterwards, or is that too far in the future? Uh, that's the number one question that we get, <laughs> and we do not have an answer. <laughs> uh, we'd like to do more with Star Trek once we're done, but we haven't decided what. Yeah. Is there a place people can find you online, like Facebook, Twitter, things like that? Sure. Uh, our website is fiveyearmission.net, and all of our other social media is connected to that, so you can find us anywhere if you just go there. Okay. If somebody wasn't able to make it to this convention, is there any other conventions you're going to be at here soon? Uh, we will be at Gen Con um, here in Indianapolis, um, and then uh, later in August we will also be at... Uh, the Star Trek Las Vegas convention. Okay. Um, and then in November, again here in Indianapolis, we'll be at Starbase Indy. Okay, great. Well, thanks a lot. Sure. Hi, I'm here with Annette Oppenlander. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Yes, I'm an author and uh, I specialize in historical fiction for teens, and usually I, I write about boys. So who will get into really troublesome situations. Yeah. Can you tell me about your latest book? Yes, my newest book is actually the first in a trilogy. It's called Escape from the Past, The Duke's Wrath. And it's about a nerdy gamer who uh, time travels into an experimental video game and ends up in 1471 in Germany at an, at an old castle, which is actually a real castle based on the history of Castle Hanstein which is sort of smack in the middle of Germany. Can you tell me a little bit about the characters? Yes, well, Max is the main character. He's 15, and he, as I said, he games. So um, he's a, quite a nerdy guy. Uh, gets himself into a lot of trouble. Uh, he, first thing, he meets uh, Barrow, who is a pig herder. And, of course, he's uh, in the Middle Ages now, and so those two butt heads a lot. Um, obviously, they're coming from very different worlds, so um, the way they see things and how they communicate causes a lot of problems. Yeah. And then, of course, there is Knight Werner von Hanstein, who is an actual knight who lived back then in the late Middle Ages. And um, he, uh, he got into a feud with um, an old, a duke. Duke Schwarzberg, who um, actually was very nasty because he stole a beautiful woman and Knight Warner had to rescue her. This is really true. So the story sort of evolves around this this historical bit. Oh, nice. So it, yeah. it does follow historical events. Yes. yes. Well, is there a website or a Facebook page where people can find more information? Yes. Of course, there's my website. It's AnnetteOppenlander.com. And then Facebook is um, Annette Oppenheimer, author. So you're welcome to visit. And, and um, there's a lot of background information about that book and um, also the trilogy. The next one in the this time travel trilogy takes uh, Max actually to um, 1870, no, 1881, New Mexico, where he meets Billy the Kid. Uh, and he also gets involved in the Apache Indian Wars. Um, there was an old guy um, who was a warrior, Chief Nana. He was a, a Warm Springs Apache, and he um, went on a vengeance war in the summer of 1881 um, and eluded the army, the American U.S. Army, for three months. They never found him, and he basically went all over, rode 3,000 miles at the ripe old age of about 80. Uh, he could barely walk, but he could ride. And um, so Max meets him, among other people. Nice. 
Well, is there any other conventions you plan on attending where people can meet you? Well, I would like to um, attend the Gen Con, but I don't think I'll be in time this year. Um, so I will have a reading book signing in Bloomington, Indiana on August 2nd at Boxcar Books. And um, then I'll be, well, probably just putting things together for the fall. Because this new book with um, the Escape from the Past will, will release uh, July 31st, 2015. Okay. So um, after right that, corner. yes, that's right. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with John Marks. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? I am um, primarily a sculptor, but I also do special effects makeup and costume design. I'm out of Indianapolis. My company's called Brazen Monkey. Can you tell me a little bit about the process? Or? Sure. Mostly everything starts in clay. I sculpt whatever my object is that I want to build, and then I'll do a mold of it, uh, usually either a silicone or a plaster. That gives me a negative of what I've done or a, a opposite, if you will. And then from there I make a cast of the object, depending on what I need to make it out of. If it's a mask, I'll do it out of foam latex. If it's a sculpture, I'll do it out of resin. just depends. Nice. Um, is there a website where people can meet you? There is. I actually am on Facebook. It's easy to find. Facebook.com slash BrazenMonkey. And is there any other conventions around that you plan on attending that people can meet you? Ooh, good question. Um, I'm not signed on for anything yet. I, I, I will be the one in uh, the next one in August in Louisville, Kentucky. And then beyond that, I believe there's the next one in Cincinnati somewhere in September. And, yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Brian O'Neill. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing? Absolutely. I'm a local author here in Indianapolis, and uh, I'm here at PopCon today uh, promoting two books. One is uh, called The Saren Prophecy. It's a new fantasy series. Uh, there's a novella that opens up uh, a bigger world. There's a novel, full-out novel coming out next month, July 2015. The other book I have is a nonfiction book um, called Original Plots. And basically, it's like a book on how to write books. Uh, on, it's on storytelling. Can you tell me a little bit about your, uh, your fictional book first? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the fictional book, uh, it, it starts out in a kind of sword and sorcery world. Uh, there's a, in the novella, there's a character named Kari, who is a, a, a barmaid, kind of like a, a medieval tavern uh, type situation. She gets wrapped up in this bigger prophecy that's happening to the world. Now, the prophecy... Uh, it, it's it's pretty it's it's meant to introduce you to the characters that will go on later into the bigger story, um, and where I'm trying to kind of like break away from the sword and sorcery thing, uh, the characters eventually kind of move into a bigger universe, so it becomes more sci-fi, like a Star Wars or Star okay. Trek, but uh, nice. more yeah, a yeah, little little bigger world there, yeah. Do you have any idea about how long it plans on running or just until you run out of content? Yeah, absolutely. Nope. Uh, I, I'm kind of like, I take the architect kind of approach to writing, so I like to kind of map out everything beforehand. So I know it's going to be six novels, but then there may be kind of spin-off novellas for each the different characters or ones that might be popular later on. Well, can you tell me a little bit about the How to Write book? Yes, yes. Non, the nonfiction book. Uh, Original Plots, uh, The Unified Field Theory of Storytelling, is a book on storytelling. And it, it came from uh, kind of like my desire to basically help writers, you know, storytellers, uh, filmmakers, and anybody who wants to create a story from scratch. Because I'm, I'm kind of like sick of all the reboots and remakes and reimaginings that are yeah. happening. You know, and, and people, you know, like... Uh, all the gender and race swaps that people are doing for the superhero characters, I mean, that's good, but it's like, when do we create original characters? And if so, how does that happen? So it's kind of like, I, I, I tried to wait years seeing if anyone would come up with a book like this, and I haven't seen it. <laughs> so, of course, I'm like, well, maybe I can help the world a little and, and write it myself, yeah. Is there any other conventions that you're going to be at around here? Uh, I, you can usually find me here at PopCon, um, uh, Indiana Comic Con, and Awesome Con if it comes back. The, any of the local ones I should be at. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you online? Like website, Facebook? Uh, yep. The web website would be uh, Brian O'Neill. It's B R Y A N O N E I L L dot com. 
everything will be there. Great. Well, thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Hi, I'm here with... Emily. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Um, we are a studio that we uh, mostly do buttons, but a lot of prints and posters and badges and charms. Kind of a very versatile group. Um, we have three very consistent um, and different art styles, and we work as a team. And we, I don't know, we draw art for the buttons, and then we punch them out back here. It's pretty cool. So you actually do it here at the convention? Yeah, we make the buttons at the convention. So the art's pre-done and pre-printed, but we punch them per order back here. Yep, we got a whole system back here. <laughs> Is there a website where people contact you online? Or? Um, yep, we have uh, business cards at the table, but we're Epic Wins Studio. You can find us on Tumblr or on Facebook or on Twitter or Instagram. Is there any other convention you plan on attending that people can come and meet you? Um, we're going to Anime Zing in Davenport, Iowa later this year. We're also signed up, hopefully, to get into NebraskaCon in Omaha. And otherwise, there's a couple we're waitlisted on, but yeah. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with... Kfir Mendel. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Um, well, um, I do geeky cave art, sort of. Um, that's hence the name Cave Geek of my, of my shop. Um, I used to be a primitive skills instructor and, and primitive high tanner for a living. Uh, one thing led to another, and I started combining my, my geek and my caveman together. And so I take... I usually... I take... Uh, uh, traditionally tanned uh, deer skins and by traditionally I mean it's the same way it's, it's traditional brain tanned buckskin same way it's been done for tens of thousands of years and I burn on it and then if I paint I paint with natural pigments using primitive tools mostly a piece of bone and my fingers um, but it takes a long time but um, as you can see yeah. it does some pretty cool stuff when you burn on the skin it actually shrivels and shrinks just like your skin would uh, and it gives it a three-dimensional texture that yeah. if you get good lighting on it, it actually pops out. Uh, so any of these pieces will actually look very, very different when you put them out to the light. Even the maps they will do. pop out. How long have you been doing this? Uh, this art I've been doing for about three years. Uh, originally, I, I dabbled a little bit of burning on wood and burning. I did a couple little pieces on buckskin, just, just burning. Uh, and then... Um, I used to teach primitive skills classes, uh, and one of the classes was using the whole animal. And we would tan the skin, and then we would use the eyeballs to make uh, a paint base out of, and then we'd paint on the, on the, on the skin as we tan and all that. And that kind of got me thinking, and I got, I got started uh, actually three, three and a half years ago uh, with a map of Middle Earth. It was the first oh, thing yeah. I did. I went straight for a big project. Yeah. Uh, it was right when the first Hobbit movie was coming out. And I just got the idea in my head, and I'm like, I wonder if I can. And I could. And when I finished it, uh, I'm like, what do I do with this thing now? So I started posting it on uh, Lord of the Rings fan sites, and then found out that the OneRing.net was having a Tolkien art show in LA like the next month. Yeah. Uh, long story short, I ended up going to the, to the art show with the map and a few other things that I'd made that month, uh, and then ended up selling the map. And I was like, ooh, I can do this. Yeah. So I just started doing more and more and more. Great. Well, uh, is there a place online where people can find you, like Facebook? Uh, like uh, Facebook, look for Cave Geek uh, on Facebook, uh, Instagram. My website is cave-geek.com. So, Great. Are you going to be at any other conventions? Uh, Boston Comic Con is my next one in, at the end of July, beginning of August. Um, other ones I don't know yet, but I will be. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Signutron. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, I, you know, I do makeup effects. I was on Face Off Season 7. Um, I was a finalist, and it was probably the best thing I've ever done in my life. So it was very enjoyable? Oh, yeah. I, like, if they do any seasons where they bring people back, I would go back in a heartbeat. Well, you say you do the makeup and stuff. Can you tell me a little bit about the process, or? Yeah. Um, so basically, you do a sculpt. You do a life cast your model. You do a sculpture on top of that. You mold that, and then you run the foam, and then uh, you 
apply the apply and paint the a prosthetic. How long have you been doing this? Uh, since 2007, which is the year I graduated high school. I, uh, as soon as I graduated high school, I went to the Tom Savini's Makeup Effects School. And two days after I graduated there, I just drove straight to L.A. I didn't even know anybody. I was just like, I got to do it. <laughs> Nothing like taking a gamble. Nope, I know. That's, I like to live dangerously. <laughs> Is there a website where people can see your work, sir? Yeah, uh, bizarroagogo.com is B-I-Z-A-R-R-O-A-U-G-O-G-O.com. Okay. And is there any conventions you're going to be at anytime soon where fans will come see you? Yeah, we're, uh, as soon as we get back, we have to finish up our costumes for San Diego Comic Con. So we also have a booth there. I think usually we're always at the same booth. I think it's booth 1633. Yeah, so if you're at San Diego Comic Con, come by and say hey. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with... Elspeth Eastman. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? I am a voice actor for video games and assorted media. I am actually uh, probably more well-known for the voice of Tristana in League of Legends. Okay. Yeah. Can, can you tell me a little bit about the process, or...? Yeah, basically what they'll do, um, if you're with a director, if you're with a team, they'll give you a script, and you read it off, and you laugh at your mistakes, and they tell you, all right, that was good, can you do it five more times? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's um, it's a really, really fun process, and uh, it's cool hearing the character in-game, um, and I play League of Legends a lot, so <laughs> it was really weird at first. <laughs> do you have anything in the works that you can talk about? Uh, yeah, actually, there's a game called Star Mazer that's upcoming, hopefully coming out next year. Um, there are a couple other things that are uh, going to be announced this summer that I can't talk about, but they're very big and very exciting. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Is there a Facebook or website where people can con- contact you? Or Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can follow my Twitter, which is Elspeth Eastman, E-L-S-P-E-T-H-E-A-S-T-M-A-N, um, or you can go to facebook.com slash Elspeth Eastman Audio. Great. And is there any other conventions that you plan on attending? Yes, I'm going to be at uh, PAX Prime, and I'm also going to be at TwitchCon. And both of those are in Seattle and San Francisco, respectively. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. I'm here with... Ernest Gibson. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? I'm a writer. Wrote a sci-fi book about good against evil. It's called The Serpent's Gift, where heaven and hell are real planets and it's a battle for galactic power can you give me about an idea like the uh, the page count how long it takes to get through or i tell you what you could probably read it in a couple days it's a fast read it's uh, short chapters about uh, 200 and some pages can you tell me a little bit about the characters well we got a person from earth who uh, watches as somebody is coming down to earth looks like they might be in a parachute but he looks up and there's no parachute and then he also looks and it says is that a halo and just about then the object he watches or the person he watches falls to the ground and he runs to that area finds this this person broken takes him back to his cabin nurses him back to health and he finds out this guy is an angel can you tell me is like a website or facebook page where people can find you yeah, it's uh, theserpentsgift.com. Okay. Are you going to be at any future conventions where people can come and meet you? I'm going to try to be at all the ones I can get to. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You are very welcome. Hi, I'm here with... Big Don from The Established Facts. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Well, uh, I'm the host of The Established Facts, which is a local Indianapolis gaming podcast. We discuss all things gaming. We're a... Uh, roundtable style discussion uh, podcast, normally five to eight people at any one time. We talk about all kinds of different uh, gaming concepts or geek concepts, whether it be from uh, comic books or movies, and, and kind of how they translate into gaming and what we love. Yeah. Nice. So how long have you guys been active? Well, uh, we're actually getting ready to celebrate the end of our fourth and beginning of our fifth year of production here in July. So, Where can people find you? Uh, we have a website, uh, www.theestablishedfacts.com. We also have a Facebook page. You just uh, look for The Established Facts on Facebook. 
Uh, we have a Twitter. Uh, NDTEF is our Twitter uh, Twitter handle. Uh, we have Google Plus. We have all kinds of different media outlets. So nice. Is there any other convention you're going to be at where people can meet you? Well, uh, we are always attendees at uh, Gen Con. We're usually wearing our podcast shirts, so if you see us, you can flag us down. Uh, and we try and promote all of the local fair uh, and try and get to them as often as we can. So, Well, thanks a lot. Hey, no problem. Hi, I'm here with... Uh, David Welch from Experimental Gamer. Can you tell me a little bit about your game? Uh, right now we're demoing Boot Hill Bounties uh, at Indie PopCon. It's a sequel to uh, Boot Hill Heroes and the continuation of that three-part saga. Is the gameplay the same as the first game, or have you changed a little? Uh, I changed a little. The general fundamentals are the same, but there's a lot of new features and overhauls of different systems that make it feel uh, fresh and improve upon the existing engine. Can you tell me a little bit about the theme of the game and the setting? Yes, this is uh, the only co-op spaghetti western uh, RPG that's command-based. So it's a very niche kind of game. But uh, it is an RPG set in the Wild West, so rather than fighting uh, dragons and wizards, you fight uh, bears and outlaws. You said it's a co-op RPG. How does that handle? Um, it can be... You have four different uh, party members you gather, uh, so that means you can have up to four different people playing. You just assign which character you want to be controlled by which input device... So you can have any combination of whichever uh, players and characters. And they can drop in and drop out any time. Can you tell me a little bit about the characters? Right, so your main character is a young man named Kid, who uh, is sort of the star of the, of the show. Uh, he gets involved in a, uh, in a scam where he learns about a truth behind an attack uh, on a town that people think was caused by the Indians, but was actually caused by a gang of outlaws. And so he uh, must uh, reveal that truth in order to save everybody from going to war. Then he meets an old bounty hunter named Doc, who is sort of is mysterious about his past. He meets uh, uh, a, uh, uh, an Indian girl who uh, joins him to help stop the war, and a rodeo gal named Rosie. Can you tell me a little bit about how long it takes to run through the game, generally? Yeah, uh, Boot Hill Heroes, the first game... Uh, that's been about 11 to 12 hours, and then a couple more with the DLC. And I expect Boot Hill Bounties to run about the same amount. Okay. Do you have any idea right. when this is going to be released? Uh, right now, I think Boot Hill Bounties is probably going to be late uh, this year, hopefully before 2016. Do you plan on greenlighting it or just releasing it when it's uh, complete? Yeah. It'll just be released on Steam. The Boot Hill Heroes, the first game went through the greenlight process, so once that is approved, a publisher and uh, developer can put uh, other games on there without going to process again okay other than this do you have any other games that you're thinking about making or uh, i gotta finish this saga so after boot hill bounties comes the third game that'll close out uh, this boot hill hero saga but i i want to make more rpgs shorter ones i want to be able to t- tackle other themes other than the wild west other interesting settings and boot uh, hill in space. yeah <laughs> boot hill in space uh, I, I sometimes kick around like, what are weird things that could be get through the RPG treatment? Like, I don't know, like a dinosaur RPG or who knows, stuff like that. I always tell that to people who are like, yeah, dinosaurs, yeah. like a party of like a T-Rex, a pterodactyl, that'd be fun. So I want to I want to tackle different themes like that and, and make a lot of uh, kind of these short retro games that kind of uh, older players who grew up playing these kind of games would really appreciate and. Uh, but also don't have a lot of time. That's 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 another thing. Is like, it's it's you want to play like a short game that's like four to five hours. This isn't that. Boot Heroes is a much longer saga. But that's what I'd like to move on to after this. Is there a website or Facebook where people can get a hold of you? Uh, yeah, the uh, we're at experimental experimentalgamer.com and uh, the, our Twitter handle is at Boot Hill Heroes. Is there any other conventions you're going to be at around where people can meet you? Yes. Uh, I'll be at the Video Game Summit in uh, near Chicago. It's kind of small. I'll also be at Camp Fan Gamer. That is uh, a big um, con, new con for Earthbound fans uh, the, and the Fan Gamer website. And um, what do you know when it's like? I think that's all for a while, yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Hi, I'm here with... Uh, Kevin Florkowitz of Five Flavors of Anime Gifts. And Caitlin Hay of Soul Strings Jewelry. 
Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do? Well, I make jewelry. Like I make custom rings, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, and I like to kind of add color to it. You know, like they're mostly video game inspired. Um, I do uh, custom painted video game consoles. I do mostly cases for 3DS and things like that. Um, just. They start out translucent. I get custom decals, paint them, clear coat them, things like that. Um, and we're together. We actually designed some uh, plush toys that we're trying to have kickstarted later this summer. They're called the Botanic Cuties, kind of garden themed, play on word things. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing. Do you guys have a website or Twitter where people can follow you? Um, yeah, we both have an Etsy store. Uh, mine is. Uh, Etsy.com slash shop slash the number five flavors of anime gifts. Oh, um, Etsy slash shop slash soul string jewelry. Yep. Okay. All yeah. one word. Yeah. Are you guys going to be at any other conventions where people might be able to bump into you? Um, we are going to be at Otakon later this year and then MatsuriCon soon thereafter. Okay. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Hi, I'm here with. Happy Better Studio. And I'm Ben. I'm Dana. Can you tell me a little bit about your product? Okay, so uh, we're a small indie studio out of St. Louis, and this is um, a game we've worked on for about eight months. It's called Smugglecraft. It's a uh, procedurally generated hovercraft racing game. Can you tell me a little bit about the storyline behind it? Um, so the storyline uh, is actually being worked on by Carol, who's over there. Um, so it, unlike most racing games where the story is like, you know, win the Grand Prix or get the Gold Cup, which is really boring... Um, ours is a branching narrative uh, based on the fact that you're a smuggler. And as a smuggler, you get to choose who you want to smuggle for. And so you can smuggle for the like the bourgeoisie, the uber rich. Uh, you can smuggle for politicians. You can smuggle for um, like a rebel group. Or you can smuggle for like the common man, the laborer. And depending on who you help and what jobs you do, can sort of uh, impact the uh, the outcome of you know of your world and change uh, what happens in the end. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about the gameplay and the mechanics of the game? So we really enjoy um, pod racing. Episode one was that is that yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't we don't have any other games like that recently. So we really kind of wanted to recreate that feel, that kind of extreme environment, harsh races where if you're if you're out, that's just it. You're out for the whole rest of the game. Uh, but it's a really fun uh, strafe mechanic. Since you're a hovercraft, you can do a lot more with it than if you were just a car. So we really utilize the strafing. And I think uh, the other thing that, you know, I grew tired of with racing games is that it's always just like, you're always driving in a circle, and it's always like, here, you, you know, you spend $60 in the game, and here's 10 tracks. Um, so the other thing that we really strive for was to create a, a racing game that had uh, procedural level generation. So every time you play, you get a different uh, track arrangement, a different set of pieces come together oh, to create nice. an experience so uh, that means you can't just memorize the track you have to actually adapt and uh, be reactive to the track as you play is it released already or is it something coming out soon uh, we're still working on it we're hoping for early release maybe first or second quarter of 2016 okay what con- what consoles or pc are um, you aiming at console exclusive to ps4 and we just got greenlit on steam a couple weeks ago so it'll be on steam so Steam will be PC, Mac, and Linux yeah. for all three. Can you tell me about any other games you might be working on that you can talk about? Or um, This is the only game we're currently working on. We do have a lot of other games that we've released. Um, everything that we've done up to this point has been a mobile game. Um, so you can find us on the, uh, the Android store or the iOS store as under Happy Badgers. Um, we've got a lot of fun games on there. They're all kind of like, you know, really quick. Uh, we got like a memory game. We've got a... a platforming roller skate donut game Um, but they're all just really fun sort of short games this is our first sort of like uh, long play experience it's our first 3d first 3d game too so okay well is there a website or facebook where people can reach you yeah so um happybadgers.com or follow us on twitter at happy badgers um and we're going to be releasing you know any any details about smuggle craft will be um on on the website and on the twitter um so yeah definitely follow us to uh Know, keep uh, in the loop about the game. Okay. Are you going to be at any other conventions where people can come and meet you? I don't know that we're Coming scheduled up, at anything yet. Not sure. Like we might uh, might do Indiecade. Um, you know, it's all kind of up in the air, just depending on, on what we have time for at this point. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for 
Hi, I'm here with... John Graham. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? You bet. I operate Fidget Press, which is a, it's a self-published comic book and book uh, experience, you could say. And I also promote the Independent Show, which is a local show that uh, encourages local creators to help other local creators. Oh, nice. Can you tell me a little bit about the show, when it is? Yep, it's November 15th, and it's at the Radisson on the west side of town at the airport. And actually, this year we're going to do the very first podcast awards oh, really? uh, for local podcast groups. Um, there's four categories you can submit in, and we're going to have an awards ceremony and some other panels and different things like that based around podcasting and promoting podcasting in general. So Nice. Um, is there a website or some place where people can find you? Yep, independentshow.com. And Independent Show is I-N-D-Y. Obviously, the crowd is loving this. I-N-D-Y, people. I-N-D-Y, P-E-N-D-E-N-T, show.com. Um, you can find me there. All the information about the podcast awards, the local creators that will be at the show, the everything. Other than that convention, are you going to be at any other convention where people can see you and talk to you about the stuff? Or? Uh, right now, I don't have anything on my calendar except for Indie Family Fest, which is a family uh, type of event up in October in Carmel, Indiana. Uh, we'll be doing like an independent show on the road type thing with lots of local creators. So. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Hi, I'm here with Justin Baker. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do? Uh, we're the Circle City Ghostbusters. We like to help out uh, local area charities. Are you guys open for uh, people to join? or uh, We're always looking for new members. All you have to do is be able to get yourself into a flight suit and uh, get down to the conventions with us. Can you tell me about where people can find you? Like online? Do you have a website? Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You just search for Circle City Ghostbusters or ccghostbusters.com. Okay. And you said fit into a flight suit. Do you guys help people build their outfits? Yes. or? Yes, we do, actually. We have build days where all of our members can come together and build whatever props they'd like to build for their Ghostbuster outfits. Nice. And is there any other conventions coming up that you guys will be attending where people can meet you? We will be at uh, Gen Con on Saturday, all dressed up. And we will probably be attending all four days as well, but not dressed up. Well, thanks a lot. Hi, I'm here with... Kivas Mitchell, Twist the Wire Art. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you're doing? Okay, I'm a, an artist. Um, I make wire sculptures. And um, from Lakeland, Florida, by way of the Marine Corps, got to Virginia, left Virginia, went to Ohio, and I've been making wire sculptures since I was eight years old. Oh, nice. Can you tell me a little bit about the process? The process begins with uh, taking 22 gauge wire, and I, I imagine the character or a, a, a figure of some movie character, historical character, cartoon, it doesn't matter whatever draws my interest and I start building from the, the skeleton and I make the body all the way out and then I start with the detail work. The process lasts about eight hours or more depending on how big it is and um, I can get as intricate as I want to or you know I just try to stay as close to the essence of what I'm trying to create as I can possibly get. How long have you been doing it? 30 years. Oh wow. Since That's, I was a little kid. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a website or a Facebook page where people can contact you and see what you're doing? Yes, sir. My website is uh, www.twistedwire.us, and my Facebook is facebook.com forward slash Deacon Lords. Okay. And I, I see you have some of various sizes. Is there a size you really like to do, or do you just like doing all of them pretty much equally? Well, the size that I, I, I like to do is around 8, eight inches, 8 to 10 inches, because... That allows me to make more sculptures because if I make them too big, like some of the ones I have are about a foot tall, it takes so much wire, and wire is hard to come by, and it's very expensive. So 8 inches allows me to make more sculptures, and it really it's a, it's a size that's really workable. I mean, you can really put it on your desk, you put it on the shelf, it's not too big, you know, and it, and it really catches the eye. Is there any other conventions you plan on attending where people can meet you? Yes, I'll be at the uh, Cincinnati Comic Con and the Cincinnati Expo. And I'm also going to the Waynesville uh, Sauerkraut Fest. Oh, really? I heard it's pretty big. It's in Ohio. We're going to try it out and see what happens. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Lola Hart. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Uh, I am a cosplayer. Uh, I've been going to conventions for about 15 years now. Um, cosplayed at pretty much every single one of them. 
Uh, and I'm here at HopCon today uh, for with a booth selling prints of myself that uh, all the funds are getting donated to charity. Oh, nice. Can you tell me a little bit about the process of coming up with an outfit? Um, it all starts off with an idea. Of course, I'm one of the crazy ones who has a list of things that they want to do. Um, and depending on how crafty I'm feeling, I either make it myself or I go to the thrift shop and piece it together. Because in the end, cosplay... It, even though a lot of the judging and whatnot has to deal with craftsmanship and how much you put into it, the most important part is just having fun with it. Is there a place people can find you online, like a website or Facebook? Of course. Um, on Facebook, it's Lola Hart. That's L-O-L-A-H-A-R-T. And is there any other conventions you plan on attending soon that people can see it? Um, I have a list of conventions, but my next big one is going to be uh, IkasuCon. And Matsuri Con in August as well. I'm running the burlesque show there. Uh, and Gen Con here in Indianapolis. Well, thanks a lot. Hi, I'm here with... Jackie Croft. James F. Wright. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do and your product? Uh, we make a comic called Nutmeg. It is like Betty and Veronica meets Breaking Bad. And I do all of the art and the coloring and the lettering. And James does the writing. Okay. So... Can you tell me a little bit about the storyline? Uh, yes, it's about these two girls, their best friends, Poppy and her friend Kasha, make these really addictive brownies. They uh, attack, attract the attention of the Lady Rangers, like the Girl Scouts, who have their own brownie baking operation in town. They're mostly on their territory. And then into that rivalry comes the teen detective, Ginger, her best friend, Annis, edits the school paper. So the cop and the journalist have to team up to bring down the crime organization of brownies that's rising in their midst. So it's like a rise and fall crime story, just all 13-year-old girls. Uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to work on. So. Can you tell me a little bit about the art style? Um, the art style is kind of like pastels, softer tones. We wanted to give it like a soft feel, but it has this kind of undercurrent of like crime beneath that nice, like shiny veneer. Can you tell me about how long the comic plans on running, or do you see an end in sight at all? There's an end in sight, uh, 15 issues is what we're looking at, at total. Uh, we have the first three issues are actually, we have at our table here. Um, Jackie is now working on issue six. I'm writing issue 10. Uh, so we're almost there, actually. We're, we're, we're getting there. Uh, we're sort of almost there. <laughs> sort of almost there. <laughs> do you guys have any other future projects planned that you can talk about? Uh, Jackie and I, I pitched Jackie an idea uh, a couple months ago, actually, now, uh, a follow-up we want to do to this one. Uh, not related in any way, just I want to work with Jackie again on, uh, it, it's a magical girls thing with uh, teenage girls with magic powers and they're kind of jerks. <laughs> so I want to try some, we're working, that, that's, that's, that's the next thing I want to work on with Jackie. Uh, I've got some other stuff in the works, I uh, can't really talk about yet, but, uh, but. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Is there a website where people can see your stuff online there is we have our site nutmegcomic.com and we also update on twitter and facebook a lot just look for nutmeg comic so yeah on, on twitter uh, at nutmeg comic uh facebook is just nutmeg comic uh, facebook uh you can email us at nutmeg comics plural at gmail.com uh, that's it yeah great are you going to be at any future conventions where people can come and meet you we will be at San Diego Comic Con in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to be at the uh, at the booth of our publisher, Action Lab, uh, and I think actually I just got the, the times today. Uh, Thursday, uh, the second day of the convention in San Diego, uh, from two to four, and Saturday from eleven to one, we'll be signing there as well. So, cool. thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Peter Spellos. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do? I'm an actor, comedian, and denture wearer. Now, I've been doing, the, I've been performing for 45 years. I'm here because of my work in anime. I was the voice of Skybite on Transformers and Merriman on Digimon and Outlaw Star, but I've also had a very fortunate film and TV career, Men in Black 2, Heartbreaker, City of Angels, about over 100 films and TV shows. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the difference between doing voice acting and standard acting? Well... It's a different skill because when you're voice acting, it's all about it's all about the voice. It's all about sitting in a room with a television set and having a skill where you can match the lip movements if you're recording from already made animation. Film and TV are a marathon. You know, you'll do two, three pages on a TV show or a film in, in one day. It takes a while. It's a lot of hurry up and wait. And it's a different kind of acting. Like stage acting, you have to be bigger, but film and TV acting, you have to be concentrated. They're all great. I've been blessed that I was able to work across all the different media. 
Nice. Out of the two, which would you prefer to do? Hmm. Yeah, God, how do you pick one of your kids, you know, at, at that point? I love voiceovers uh, because I don't have to wear anything. Now, not that I'm naked, but I can come unshaven in my baseball hat, and I don't have to worry about memorizing lines because they're right there in front of me. You know, not that it's a problem memorizing lines, but it's sort of it's, it's there for you. When you're on a film set, you could be on location, you could be ready for your scene, but they're not going to use you for four hours. And yet, when you go to the movies, there you are. Yeah. You know, on the screen or on the TV show. So, I, I, to answer your question, I can't pick uh, whatever they hire me for. That, that's how it was taught to me. Be able to do whatever they want you to do. Oh, well, that's good. Do you have a website or Facebook page where people can find you? I do, absolutely. You can go to Peter Spellos on Facebook and make sure you go to my page and not the fan pages so you get in touch with me. I have no social media guru. I do. When you're speaking to me, you're speaking to me. At P. Spellos on Twitter, Peter Spellos, no spaces, lowercase on Instagram. Contact me, say hi, tell me what you're doing, and we'll have a conversation about life. Great. Do you have any projects coming up that you're capable of talking about? Um, no. And it's, a, you know, I might be doing a film here in Indiana in September, which is great, but right now I live back in New York. I help take care of my 94 year old mom, and that's, that's my best project in the world. You know, so I'll be working again. Hopefully, I'm going to be doing more of the con circuit, and I'm definitely coming back to Indiana. Great. Do you know of any conventions you plan on attending soon that your fans can see yet? You know, I haven't been booked for anything. Um, I did uh, Auto Assembly in the U.K. last year. They're doing their last one. Maybe Cincy Comic Con. Um, it's kind of hit and miss, whatever, you know, whatever they bring you in for. I think this one will help me do a couple more. But uh, I'll keep in touch and let you know what I'm doing. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Hi, I'm here with April Place. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Yeah, uh, basically I'm the project manager for Return of Etheria. It's an IPY made game by the students, for the students, for the players here at the cons. We demoed it at Comic-Con, and that was just with one of our featured games. That's the mini game, the big huge touch screen table. And so we had over a thousand people play that, ga that game during those three days. So we figured, let's do it again. Let's go to Pop Comic or, uh, PopCon. We already kind of had an agreement with them. We went there last year and did this whole shebang, but this year it's, we brought new elements to the table. We have the Oculus Rift with the working fans and the heat lamps and this audio and everything. It's absolutely wonderful. It's built this box and everything. And then we also have our mini game table. We didn't have that last year, and we it was a great hit at Comic Con. So we thought, let's do it here as well. And uh, yeah, it's just an alternate reality game that we decided to put together. And this is the third and final year for it. So oh, really? they're not going to do it ever again. But we have a lot of return players that are really sad about that. Yeah. So you're yeah. not going to have it at any other conventions um, after this year? I mean. Grand Rapids had asked us about something like that during Comic Con, and we got a lot of things from. Uh, we, we got a lot of uh, other people that were interested in other cons, but they all want it for next year, or, yeah. you know. And so, and I'm I graduated this year, so I'm just continuing it to make sure this thing works really well. Yeah. And but I'd love to go to Grand Rapids Comic Con. It's not till um, I think October sometime. But it does cost money, so that's yeah. the only thing. Yeah, and IPUI already sponsored this whole thing, so, yeah. But it's a lot of fun, definitely. Well, can you tell me a little bit about the game itself? Or? Yeah, uh, basically it's the world of Etheria. So Etheria is another term for magic. So basically this is the last chapter. We have an evil, evil Esper, an evil Nether, and they're both dark forces working against you the whole time. And you're the hero. You're the one that's going to be the next spirit champion. You're trying to overthrow his power and his evil champions and become the ultimate one. So the top four players are going to be those next champions, and they actually get to battle off with Nether at the very end. And we have a whole other mini game they get to play, and they have to shoot arrows at them and magic and all craziness. So we have a big finale for that at the very last uh, day. But you spend your time, you sign in, you spend your time questing. and It's an alternate reality game that's on top on our kiosks. You sign in with your RFID card and everything, and then you just start questing. We have uh, game designers in the back corner that will help you on your journey and will give you the room codes. And once you finish the quest, you get room codes. You put that in, and you progress through the game. So oh, nice. yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of fun. The Oculus is just a basically a trailer of what's going on. It tells you the story, all that jazz. You know, the land of Etheria shows you what was and what's to come if something goes wrong. You know. Yeah. 
And then uh, the mini cable is just every time you play, you sign in with your RFID card, you get points, that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. But well, we had uh, over 40 students on this project oh, really? working this year, and then we had 40 students the last year too working on it. So we've had quite a few hands on this. A lot of artists, a lot of programmers, crazy people. With this project ending, do you have any idea what the next project might be for them? Or? Um, I do believe that next year it's going to be a smaller smaller group of people, probably 20 people. There's not going to be a project manager like me. They're going to do pro- totally professor run. And they're thinking about doing an app-based game or possibly working with the museums, the local museums around. So like the Chicago Museum or the Indianapolis Museum, something like that. Making yeah. something fun, interactive for them to show and play. And, nice. But yeah. But everyone's really sad. I mean, we have yeah, return yeah. players that are like, oh, my gosh, and so excited. But then they realize it's the last year. So, yeah. But they're working even harder. I mean, one person just surpassed 1,000 a, a points. So, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's good. That's... Yeah. I mean, in each point, every uh, quest is like 5 or 10 points, and that's it. So to oh, get 1,000, really? you yeah. have to play a lot of quests. Yeah. 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 So. Is there a website where people can read more about the group? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Returnofetheria.org. Definitely look on there. You can see all the students that created it, all the previous sponsors and students, and then you can read up on the story and where we were and yeah, yeah see some pictures of people. And, nice. Yeah. Uh, is this the last con it's going to be at, or you have yep. the, the yep, last it's, one? It's huh? the last one unless I convince my crazy professors to follow me to uh, the one up, up north, up yeah. Grand Rapids. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But, I mean, a lot of us love it. Yeah. All, all of us kids that are in it, we're going to be continuing to work together on other projects just because we work so well on this one together. Yeah, that's good. It yeah. helps build a community and Oh, definitely. Networks. It's opened our eyes on how easy it is to make something this successful. And we're not charging any money for this. And we've already had 150 or 100, I think it's 160 now people sign up. And right. last year we only had 250 the whole three days. So oh, yeah. we're already going to succeed it, you know, by a lot. Nice. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah, definitely. Hi, I'm here with... Sarah Williams. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Uh, I am a voice actor for video games and anime and animation and commercials and stuff. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about where people might recognize you from? Uh, I was Jinx in uh, League of Legends, Peacock in Skullgirls, No Known Jacuzzi Day in Kill a Kill, and Lizbeth in Sword Art, to name a few. Okay. Do you have any upcoming projects that you can talk about? Um, it was already announced, but I'm playing Sayu in um, A Lull in the Sea, or Nagi no Asakura, Asakata, Asukata, there we go. And uh, that's due out on the June 30th, I believe. Okay. Can, you, can you tell me a little bit about the process? Generally, you get set an audition, and you report, and it's a sam- and an audition is a sample script of what they, what you, what the character they want you to audition for. And you record that, and you send the file back to them, and then they get a bunch of other files from other actors, too. And they look, they listen to all those files and decide which voice that they like best, that matches best. And then if you're lucky enough to get chosen, you go into the studio and you record the full script, and yeah. Cool. Is there a place where people can find you on the Internet, like a website or Facebook? Uh, I'm generally most active with fans on Twitter. That's... Um, at Sarah and Willie, and uh, Sarah with an H and Ann with an E, and Williams was supposed to be the Willie was supposed to be the end of my Williams uh, last name, but I couldn't fit it. So. Oh yeah. Y- you'll notice me by the peacock picture on my on my Twitter page. Okay. Are you going to be at any future convention? Uh, coming up, I'm moving back to LA for Anime Expo. And then uh, I'm going out to Canada for Anime Evolution, and then I'll be back in Canada again for Anime Con. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Steph Raybro. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? I do animation and illustration videos. Watch me draws on YouTube. Okay. What what channel would that be? Uh, Steph Raybro. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing it? Uh, for about two and a half to three years long, and. Uh, I've kind of jumped from like last PopCon I was at 60,000 subscribers now I'm at 134 37 somewhere like that yeah Yeah. so so what's the is the process any different doing it as recording doing it or Uh, I don't zoom in as much so like if you zoomed in on my stuff some of it might be a little bit sloppier but like because I keep uh, when I'm recording my screen, if I zoom in out, zoom out, when you speed it oh, up, yeah. it's going to give people seizures. So like, <laughs> I I kind of set my computer when I do a piece for uh, for YouTube. 
I set it to where it, you know, it, it doesn't move around a lot. And so I'm very okay. self-conscious of the view. So other than YouTube, is there like a website people can find you at or Facebook? I'm currently, that's the guy by the way, <laughs> I'm currently working on a design for an actual website. But I have Facebook, Twitter, and I do Twitch as well, so where you can watch me draw live. Okay. Thank you. Are you going to be at any future convention where people can come out and meet you? Um, right now, VidCon in California. I'm not an exhibitor. I'm just an attendee. And if I make it back in time, Gen Con, I'll be walking around. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with... Tom Eastman. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Yeah, I'm a programmer at Trinket Studios. We're showing Battle Chef Brigade here at Indie PopCon. Can you tell me a little bit about the game? Yeah, it's basically Fantasy Iron Chef. So you got orcs, elf, human chefs, and you go out in the arena, hunt monsters, bring, them, bring their ingredients back into the kitchen, make delicious dishes for the judges. Sounds interesting. What platforms are you looking at? We're starting with PC, Mac, Linux, all the Steam platforms, basically, and then progressing on to consoles. Nice. What, what's the price point going to be? That's a great question that we haven't determined. Uh, <laughs> so it'll probably be 15 or 20. 15 or 20? Um, do you know when it's going to be released? Sometime in 2016, hoping spring or summer. Spring or summer? Can you tell me a little bit about the process without going too in detail? Yeah, uh, so basically you hunt monsters, sort of like Super Smash Brothers. Then you bring the ingredients back, and each ingredient has different properties. And you manipulate all the ingredient properties to end up with a very high-scoring dish that hopefully each of the judges will like, given their preferences and dislikes. And you get lots of points and crush your opponent chefs as you progress through a tournament. Nice. <laughs> Is there going to be a ladder or anything like that? Or since it's uh, Yes, there will be some amount of single-player competition and multiplayer, we'll see. <laughs> Is there a website or Facebook where people yes, can find you? Yes, you can go to BattleChefBrigade.com and Battleshef, yeah, Battleshef Brigade on Facebook or anywhere else. If you Google anything, Trinket, Battleshef Brigade, you'll find everything. Okay. When you're done with this game, do you have anything else in the works that you can talk about? No. We used to make mobile games, and now this is our big, giant indie experiment to see how making a huge game works out. Okay. Is there any future conventions you plan on being at? Yeah, we'll be at PAX Prime at the end of August. Oh, really? Nice. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm here with... Tromalia. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do? Independent filmmaker for almost 50 years. Um, just... Making films, disrupting the media. What kind of films do you make? A little bit of everything. Um, basically, teenage exploitation, you know, just good films. I mean, a little bit of everything. We create our own genre. Newcomb High is one of my favorites as a classic. Do you guys ever plan on returning to it? or? Um, actually, yes, the Newcomb High Volume 2 was just crowdsourced by Troma fans. And will be uh, doesn't have a release date yet, but will um, be distributed soon. Nice. Um, do you know what, what's the next film you guys have in the market coming out, or can you talk about it? Um, we cannot talk about that. It is tightly under wraps. Uh, what was your latest film? Um, it would be the Return of Class of Nuke, my volume two. Yes, because okay. we literally just crowdsourced it. We're able to raise over sixty-five thousand dollars because of amazing fans like yourself. Great. Uh, is there a website or a Facebook page where people can reach you? Um, we do have Facebook, Twitter, basically every type of social media. Um, and we have 250 free films on our YouTube, which is Troma Video. And is there a, a convention you guys are going to be at other than this where fans can come out and meet you? And we will be at Horror Hound here in Indianapolis coming up. Um, and if you pay attention to our website, Troma.com, um, there are a list of appearances coming up on there as well. Well, thank you. Hi, I'm here with... Yumino Cosplay. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Well, I'm a cosplayer. I, for a normal job, quote-unquote, I, I do a lot of uh, modeling and freelance work, and I, I'm a postal worker now, officially. <laughs> but uh, as far as what I do for cosplay stuff, I come out to conventions, dress up as my favorite characters, and hang out. Can you tell me a little bit about the process? Um, cosplaying it usually just starts with a character that you really like, and then you think about how you can go about making it, and you start doing reference photos, and it just snowballs from there. <laughs> can you tell me about where people can find you, like online, Facebook? 
Yeah, I'm actually on Facebook. Uh, you can hit me up, uh, facebook.com forward slash Yamino Cosplay. The O is a zero. <laughs> and is there any other conventions you plan on attending soon? Um, I'm going to be headed out to Mitsuri Con in Ohio. That's my next big con I'm going to. Well, thanks a lot. And that will do our Indie PopCon coverage with all of our interviews by Justin. Thank you for listening, and we will talk to you guys real soon.